So, Overlord gets a lot of hate, since the Sacred Kingdom movie and the first accusation often made against Overlord is that it's one of those bad isekai anime, and that alone is enough to categorize Overlord as inherently bad. Yes, it's completely acceptable nowadays to dismiss an entire genre or subgenre of anime as universally unworthy, or not worth watching based on little more than prejudice. I understand that there are a lot of mediocre isekai anime where the standard plot is more or less retold without changes. An absolute loser is brought into a new fantasy world where he's overpowered. All the women love him, and he can solve every problem with his new powers so even more women love him, but he's as dense as a neutron star so he won't act on anything. However, Overlord is precisely not that. It's not about the main character Ains, quickly becoming overpowered, and Albedo's attraction to Ans is more annoying to him than anything else. Overlord is also far removed from the typical blank slate character archetype that characters like Kirito and others represent. Besides, and I just want to point this out on the side, entire YouTube channels have made a fortune by hating on anime like Sword Art Online. But interestingly, this hate only started after the initial hype around Asterisk Sword Art Online Asterisk had passed. When SAO was in its prime, Surprisingly few people had anything critical to say about it, probably because the isekai concept was still relatively new at the time and hadn't become a standard. Even though there were already other isekai anime like Inuyasha or Digimon, they weren't as similar to sword art online. In other words, this is more a case of oversaturation within a genre where you have to sift through 10 mediocre anime to find one good one. But the search behavior and expectations of viewers aren't something Overlord should be blamed for. It's just that people are so biased that they won't even give Overlord a fair chance as an independent series. It's as if you read 10 bad or mediocre detective or romance novels, or get spammed with them on social media and then assume that all crime or romance stories must be bad. This isn't to say that you have to like a particular genre or you're not allowed to dislike it but it's a shame that Overlord isn't even given a chance to stand on its own. Another accusation is that Ein's Ulgaon is completely overpowered from the start and can't level up or develop further. I understand what people mean here, as Overlord isn't for those who want the main character to simply get stronger and learn amazing new combat techniques. But just like in One Punch Man, the point isn't that Ains gets physically stronger, or that every fight is a close call. Ains is already at level 100, the maximum level, he can't become physically stronger, just like many of the other NPCs from the Great Tomb of Nazarick. But I actually find this aspect brilliant, because character development here isn't just a matter of simply saying, okay, the character has leveled up ten times and unlocked a new skill. Instead, it's much more about the psychological development of the characters. For instance, Cassidus initially sees himself, up until Volume 4, as nothing more than a sword arm for the 41 players of Nazarick someone who should mindlessly follow his overlord's orders without his own input. However, thanks to Ains Ul Gaon, he undergoes dramatic character growth. He begins to think independently about tactics and strategies, to plan ahead, to mentally flourish. And in the end, Cassidus is the one who works out a significant part of the attack strategy against the army of the Reestes kingdom in Volume 14. However, this mental development is subtle and can't be expressed in levels or skill points, and that's the case for many of the characters in Overlord. Their growth isn't about becoming stronger, but about advancing in character. And even with Ain Suwalgaon, you can see how he gradually lets go of the hope of finding his friends, the only remaining humans who still mean something to him, and comes to terms with the fact that the NPCs, the characters created by them, are all that remain. And Ainz's personal development becomes even more profound when you see how he evolved in the bonus volume. In the story with Evil Eye, Ainz, who in that version is alone in the new world without the guild, Nazarick, or NPCs, with a deep sense of distance from his friends, was able to say farewell to them. Instead, he built an interpersonal relationship with Evil Eye, founded a new guild, and essentially experienced a second life filled with adventures and camaraderie. This makes the current version of Ains, who can't say goodbye to his old friends, all the more tragic. Another criticism is that Ains is never in danger and has never truly had to fight at his limit. And yes, that's true. If you go in with expectations that Ains constantly has to fight for survival, you'll probably be disappointed with Overlord. But that's generally not what the story is about. And even then, 
This statement is also wrong because Ains had to use all his power and resources, items, gear, and so on at his disposal in his fight against Shaltir, mobilizing every bit of strength he could muster. Despite this, the outcome was extremely close, and Shaltir Bloodfallen would have won the fight without Aura's sneaky intervention simply because Ains struggled with his emotions in the last crucial moment, causing him to hesitate briefly. The fight of Ains in the Holy Kingdom was also exciting for different reasons. This isn't to say that such moments don't exist. On the contrary, the story has many exceptionally well-written supporting characters who are interesting and, most importantly, not overpowered. Yet they find themselves facing Ains and Nazarick. This creates an enormous amount of tension, as you never know which characters will survive in the end, who will be lucky enough to be resurrected and who Ains will consciously decide to let die. After all, Arch could have survived if Ains had a different understanding of the word mercy. And in general, these well-written supporting characters who don't know the full extent of Nazarick's influence, and who confront powers far beyond anything they can imagine are one of the anime's greatest strengths. The series tells incredibly engaging stories. Renner and Climb, Archie and her team, Brain Unglouse's character development, Evil Eye's betrayal of Lachius, Platinum's true personality, and so much more are all fascinating, and you just keep wanting to know more. Which brings me to the last point. Overlord has extremely good and in-depth world building. Every item, every skill, and every character trait is significant. How the various peoples and nations live and their perspectives on life are very well and intricately portrayed. For example, Demiurge naturally has a completely different perspective than Tsar Yusu Shasha or Emperor Jerkniv, and the world-building makes every move by Nazarick and Ains exciting to follow. The characters and the world they inhabit aren't just there for Nazarick to save or plunge into chaos. They exist as independent entities and nations. Even if Ains Ul Gaon didn't exist, the entire conflict between the Empire and the Kingdom overshadowed by the theocracy and its struggle against Zurer Norn and Platinum's influence, the conflict between Slain and the Elf King, the Dragon Kingdom invasion, and much more, would still be complex, fascinating, and worth watching. Even without an Isekai protagonist, the anime would still be worthwhile simply because the world is so incredibly well written. So these are the major criticisms people have of Overlord, and my thoughts on them. As I said, you don't have to like the anime or isekai as a genre, but I feel Overlord is often unfairly hated by people who don't really understand what it's actually about. However, there is one thing I can't defend, and that's the rather mediocre CGI animation, which makes important parts of the anime look very off-putting. For example, the appearance of the Dark Young or the arms of Jaldabaoth. Yes, I also wish this weren't the case and I believe the anime is rightly criticized for this aspect. I, along with many others, would much prefer if everything were traditionally drawn and animated. And this channel, The Mind Failure, was made by me, Shergorg, and I use almost a woman to narrate my video scripts without my strong German accent, since a lot of you didn't like and it. And this channel, The Mind Failure, was made by me, Shergorg, and I use almost a woman to narrate my video scripts without my strong German accent, since a lot of you didn't like it.